that brings us to the next question. The United States is a massive producer of popular culture. So what is the status of uh, media studies and media literacy in the United States? Well, from what I've been able to see, comparing it to the other English-speaking countries, it seems to be way behind. I mean, I don't have a lot of um, actual statistics to give you, but simply seeing where the big scholars are coming from and some of the early work, it's certainly much stronger or seems to be in England, Australia, um, and also the Canadian scholars as well. And I think part of that simply is that America and American culture is so much television itself. I mean, America is television. We had you know, actors in the White House and uh, elections fought on, on commercial uh, TV in the sense that it's so much a part of the um, uh, daily existence practically woven into our genetic codes now that the fact of kind of push pulling that out and looking at it carefully, um, I think most universities here think it would be like studying the backs of our hands. I mean, it's this idea of um, uh, looking at, at, at the things that are so obvious and so, so clearly uh, part of the daily culture that somehow they don't belong uh, behind the uh, walls of academia. Uh, talk about uh, getting students interested in looking at the things that are obvious and coming up with a kind of a critical analysis of the obvious movie. Not only do you get a sense that they enjoy these things, but you mm -hmm. try to get a critical perspective on their consumption. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting in that I think probably studying television or whatever you're studying, fast food, the shopping mall, whatever you're doing in, in popular culture, is probably the hardest class for a student to grasp, even though they gravitate towards them. There's huge waiting lists. I mean, they hear, they're watching Leave at the Beaver in this class and getting college credit for it. So there's certainly a strong response to those types of classes. However, it's, I guess I would make the equation, when I first uh, started studying film, as long as we were doing Renoir, Antonio, and Bergman, and all these people, it was really easy to do that just like you do any other college class. They were hard, they were in foreign languages, there were subtitles, they were subtle. I mean, you had to really do this usual type of thinking like you would in a poem or a painting or anything else. I mean, it, it looked, sounded, acted, and smelled like art. When we got to Star Wars and Westerns and uh, you know The Wizard of Oz and so forth, suddenly I was much more resistant to being able to take that seriously. I mean, you keep thinking, well, these are just films that people want to see. They're just telling stories. And I think students tend to really resist you know, hyper-intellectualized analyses of, of shows like Star Wars or The Breakfast Club or whatever you want to think about. So in, in some ways, I think it's in showing students these things they're already so intimately familiar with, these programs that they've seen every episode of, of every series, there's a real sense of um, giving them a real intellectual slap in the face when all of a sudden you're going to watch the Andy Griffith show and you're not simply going to take off your shoes and put your feet up and uh, you know, open a bag of Doritos and, and watch the thing like you usually do. Um, the sense that all of a sudden we're going to treat that show for that, that class like we would treat you know, Ode on a Gratian Urn or something like that. And the interest, I think, is there, and you've already hooked them in, and they think, oh, good, we're going to watch TV. I mean, remember when you were in uh, grade school, the, the huge joy that would come into your breast when you'd walk in and the, the film projector would be set up, and you'd go, all right, the room's going to be dark, we're not going to have to uh, um, you know, listen to this boring teacher, we're going to have some sort of you know, media presentation. So I think you've already got them hooked, basically, because they're doing something, um, dealing with something they already feel they're so familiar with. But I think that's sort of the bait, and then what really happens in there is you begin to um, demonstrate how when you shake those familiar media products up a little bit, all kinds of stuff starts spilling out that they never realized was there. And the biggest comment I get over and over again from students that I find very satisfying is I think it's a first step in getting people to think, enjoy, and critically analyze um, television, and therefore they can later apply that to King Lear and poems and so forth, is... Um, Oh, boy, I never watch TV this way. I can never watch TV the same. Now I go home and I watch a commercial and I'm seeing this and I watch a sitcom and I'm seeing that. In the sense of really, I think, sort of peeling the scales from people's eyes. And if you can do that, and if you can teach a student to really get a pleasurable aesthetic experience out of television, all of a sudden that seven and a half hours a day the average person watches becomes a much more meaningfully spent seven hours. And it's cheap, it's free in, in most cases, and... Um, that, I think, is the ultimate purpose of art anyway. I mean, I don't think a class on Shakespeare, television, or Beethoven has ever really uh, done anything on some grander political scale. It's never disarmed the country, or it's never helped the environment. I mean, ultimately, I think art criticism is uh, 
should be art appreciation. I mean, if you can't have fun with Shakespeare, what, what other good is Shakespeare? And I think television should fall into that same set of categories.